Coming up, a Sad Styles production. Get into it! Welcome to the Retrograde Video Game Podcast, where this week we talk about all the nominations for the Game Awards. Oh my goodness, my name's Andrew Baskman, with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. Mike Keeley, Aaron Orth, yeah, it's Jeff, that Jeff or Mike Keeley. It's either that or you're a huge fan of Ted Lasso and her, the character Keeley. Uh, so I don't know Ted Lasso. I was talking uh, yeah. to someone earlier today, mm. uh, uh, and they said- uh, Is this a Hassan Minaj thing where that's not true? I've heard a, that he just doesn't tell the truth. <laughs> he doesn't tell the truth, and then he came out and said, I do tell the truth, and now I don't know who to believe. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a very modern problem. It does. You turn on the internet any day, who do you believe? I know who I believe. And that is it's a combination of like Joe Rogan, Jordan Peterson, <laughs> and everyone else, I think. Um, um also I don't I, I find that, that to be a very lazy punchline and I yes. want to stop doing it. Yes. Um uh so I'll stop doing it after this one. But mm -hmm. boy, that one worked. <laughs> oh, no, someone, get it home. Someone today came up to me and they were like, uh, excuse me, sir. They didn't say that. Nice. They said, uh, hey, do, you know, face. do you know that's more like it? <laughs> they said, uh, do you know who Chris Bumstead is? And do you know who Chris Bumstead is? I don't. Is? So he's a five time uh, Mr. Olympia champion. Oh, wow. And the comparison that I get to Chris Bumstead, because this person's like, you look like Chris Bumstead. I've gotten that a lot online and several times in person. Uh, it's not because of my physique. Oh. It's just that he has a mustache and curly hair. Oh, you so got like the jawline and the mustache. It's and... less even jawline. It's mm. just the mustache and the hair pretty much. Uh, uh, but people come up and, 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 and say that. And the, 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 at first when I heard someone call me Chris Bumstead, I was like, I didn't know who he was. Yeah. I'm like, that has to be someone making fun of me. I'm like, what is it? So the reason I bring that up is because you talked about Ted Lasso. Yeah. And I told the person, I was like, I have had that before. There are three people I get compared to. If I piss off the video game community, I'm Luigi. If I piss <laughs> off the, the soccer community, I'm Ted Lasso. And if I'm just around a gym in the general vicinity yeah. I'm Chris Bumstead. Wow, that's amazing. Mustaches yeah. do a lot. Eh? They really just it's loop you in. Do a lot of hard, hard lifting there. None of those, just like Chris Bumstead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of those three people have anything in common except for the mustache. And yet I've gotten all three of them. Wow, that's amazing to compare to Mr. Olympia. You yeah, look like I, an ill Chris Bumstead. I, I usually say I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you know what? I do see the resemblance, except I'm way more jacked. And then everyone's like, no, no, he's really strong. I'm like, fucking Jesus I love Christ. people that are super earnest though. Yes. Like, oh no, no, he's very big. And you're like, uh, yeah, I got that. He's Mr. Olympia. Uh, he's as big as the Game Awards nominations Very were good. this week. Uh, uh, we're recording the week of the announcements. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Jeff Keighley is the name behind the Game Awards. Uh, love him or hate him. He's going to come up in conversation for sure. I think we're going to talk about not only the nominations mm. and some of our predictions, we're going to go over uh, who we want to win, who we think is going to win. And we're going to make a little game of it. We're actually going to keep track of who ends up winning uh, come December 7th. And then we'll uh, tally that and give a little update on a, on a future episode. Uh, but before we talk about the game awards uh, in total, some of the issues, some of the things we like about it, sure. I have some gaming news that I want to update oh you goodness. on. Uh, um, and before I update you, Andrew, I have a question for you. Tell me your thoughts on the Madden curse. <laughs> Don't do this to me. No, I just, I'm just curious. Do I'm just curious that, like, generally speaking, yeah, I, do you believe in the Madden curse? Oh no, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. Bring no. it on, whatever curse. I'm going to walk under every ladder. I'm going to kick every black cat. Uh -huh. It's going to be great. Yeah, no. Uh, so this is, uh, of course, that the Madden Madden cover athlete uh, then proceeds to have a bad year the next year. Yes. Now. Uh, last year, uh, or excuse me, this year, uh, Josh Allen mm -hmm. uh, of the Buffalo Bills, my favorite football team, was mm -hmm. on, and I was very excited. And I bought, the, <laughs> I bought the edition. Immediately went, well, that was a waste of money, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I've learned nothing. And this year, he, the team is having an okay year. They're five hundred, which is yeah. not not up to expectation. Still, well within possibility to make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, they could make the playoffs. It's yeah. it's just just they're they're having a more disappointing year than we than we thought. And Josh Allen's still having a good year. So I don't yeah. I don't really know what I don't know what to to equate that to. Uh, yeah, it's funny you bring that up. I was, I was wondering if you were going to say something like this. Yeah. I actually, this is why it's more dreadful. Cause I'm like, oh fuck. He said the thing I thought he might say. Uh, it's, it's tough. Like I, I'm also a sports fan. I was much more of a sports fan in the past. Yeah. And it sucks because when you plant your flag in a team or a player mm -hmm. or something like that, people come out of the woodworks to shit on you when they have no skin in the game. So I hate being that person, but I figured it does link. Oh, I, I'm so glad you're bringing this up. So it, it, Mike's bringing this up mostly because uh, the Buffalo Bills lost uh, in hilarious fashion on Monday Night Football, like just devastating mm -hmm. against a very bad team. And a man kind of returned from the dead to lose the game. For them. I did text somebody going, maybe we should have left him dead. <laughs> 
And then I got a lot of Andrew. And I'm like, yes. no, I'm, jo I'm joking. Kind of. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> his revenge against all of us. Why did you save me? I'll cost you this game. <laughs> is uh, is it, the number of people that will come out, you're right, of the woodwork to try and support you in a way too. Going like, hey, hell of a game. Yeah. And I'll get... 30 of those texts from people. Sometimes you don't text that often yeah. and you're like, is this when you want to hear from me right now in this moment? <laughs> what the fuck do you think? What insight am I going to provide yeah. in this moment? Going like, yeah, very devastating. Want to kill myself. See you guys later. <laughs> like, thanks buddy. It is, it is uh, uh, one kind of weirdly. Hey, her just, your wife thing. left you. Uh, really tough. Yeah. Best of luck. <laughs> Honestly, that dude seems like he needs a little bit of help. That guy might need a friend. If you're, if your friend's wife just left him, I, I think, I think maybe reach out. Hey, I saw, I saw Shirley pack her bag and just walk out the front door. How you feeling? <laughs> well, you know, he's just standing there in the door holding his phone like, uh. but that's not as bad as that's not as bad as as texting the person after seeing Shirley walking out the door being like, oh, I knew you couldn't keep her. <laughs> like those are the ones that used uh, to piss true. me off the most. I just, even when people are nice, I still just like, ah, do I really want to talk right now? Who, Andrew, that says a lot about you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does it? I think so. Uh -oh. I think so. What do you think Damar Hamlin's doctors felt when that happened? They looked around like, oh, fucking hell. Fuck, he's, he's Frankenstein. They're going to blame us on this. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, uh, I, that was, uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of kind of tongue in cheek, but I was I was curious to see if you if you believed in the Madden curse or was, not. Uh, was Madden nominated for best sports game of the year? Oof, good question. I'd have to look it up. I don't think it was. It was no, not. It was not. It was not. And uh, I find that to be unsurprising and a very valid snub. A very weak year for cool. sports games in general. We're not even talking about it because it's such a weak yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't even include that. We 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 limited ourselves to a certain number of uh, of categories just because uh, I think I think there are more important ones like best esports player. A <laughs> don't know. B don't give a fuck. <laughs> we do not care. Can you make one up and test me? Because I swear to God, if it was like, if it's like, uh, say I didn't know who PewDiePie is. Okay. Right. Yeah. But you said <laughs> PewDiePie. I'd be like, uh huh. And they're like, what about Delingus? And I'm like, Delingus <laughs> might be a guy. I don't know. PewDiePie is the reference that like, we like, there was a time when, when you're like, our parents would not know PewDiePie. Yeah. The, the PewDiePie reference is like if if our parents came to us to talk about football and they're like, you know, that Walter Payton has really got something. <laughs> know, it's like a couple generations too late. He's uh, he's 50 now. People yeah. don't know that. He's yeah, like 68. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I wouldn't even I couldn't even tell you. It's a 15 year old probably. And yeah. I'd be like, yeah, very popular. Like There's, Ninja would be the next one. that Ninja I would, know. would be a big one. Markiplier or whatever their name. Sure. I, don't, I don't watch a ton of streamers. I, I, I What I like to do and I do watch some people stream games before, which is uh, especially when it came to Overwatch, I just I found that kind of sure. Fun. And there were streamers that I would watch, but not even really because of their personality. It was because of how good or bad they were at the game. Yeah. So I I, I struggled to to find a a personality who I would like to watch sit down and play games for six hours, not because they're good at the game, but just because they are someone. And I understand yeah. that there's. I mean, I am in the minority. A ton of people want to do that, but I'm not. That is not a form of entertainment for me that I've ever really uh, no. engaged with. And I think it's really tough. It's not for me either because I think I just I miss that generation. Yeah. And I don't have to say there's people that are older than me that really like that. So I'm not trying to say that, but it's more as a person that has spoken thousands of hours into a microphone. I can imagine it's very tough when you're doing a nine hour stream continuously. Oh my God. And if I catch you on your seven and a half hour and he's just like, yeah, fuck you. Suck my nuts. And you're just like, well, this guy's boring. You're like, he's been doing it for seven hours, man. Like, Honestly, like, like I, I would constantly worry about slipping up just a little bit and saying the wrong thing. Not even like almost the kind of thing where you're like, don't say this, don't say this, don't say this. And then you say it. So many streamers get caught doing things like that. I, I don't know if it's intentional or, or just a, a oh, slip yeah. of the Maybe tongue. Good knows, but man, yeah, to be speaking live on a camera for like six hours a day, that's that's tough. It's tough to record this mainly just because of the, the people that I have to record with. <laughs> Probably um, Elliot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about Elliot. Yeah, the producer. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did. It was a gaming producer. Did you get nominated this year? No, no, oh, yeah. okay. no, 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 no. We, we didn't let them. They actually asked if, if Elliot wanted to be nominated for, for best gaming producer. And we said, no. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Yeah. You're pretty ripped. Did you see that actual podcast awards? I don't know. I don't think there's an official one, but ones were nominated or, or handed out like a week ago. Uh huh. So maybe like 10 days for when you're hearing this. Sure. Uh, and uh, hottest podcaster went to Taylor Lautner Hot. from uh twilight hottest podcaster? hottest podcaster. That's an award. Yeah. So I think we were snubbed. Next to Taylor Lautner, though, Andrew. Yeah, he's pretty hot. He's pretty hot. Yeah. I didn't know he had a podcast. I was wondering what happened to him. Well, there you go. Now I know. And now you know he's doing podcasts. Yeah. That's what happens when people go to uh, to just disappear. <laughs> well, the problem is, is like, is 
you know, we got into the podcast. Game. We do not need to be talking about this, but we okay, got into the sure. podcasting game like a year or two late, bef- not even late, <laughs> just before every celebrity had a yes, podcast. Yes. And it's like now it's like, who do you how do you how do you compete? But uh, 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 enough podcast uh, award news. I want to talk about my gaming news that I want. to. Oh, update sorry. You on, this Andrew. is why we started. We talked about uh, uh, a game that was getting a lot of praise in in the circles that we run in as they say uh that do You're not want to track and field team yeah, yeah 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 running circles i run beside them <laughs> and then they say please stop running with us and i said and you gotta run faster uh alan wake 2 oh yes alan yes. wake 2 has been getting a ton of praise it seems to be this weird dark horse prediction for game of the year a lot of people think that it's actually going to pull this off pull off the upset and in, in one of the most phenomenal years of gaming we've experienced and so many people whose opinions i very much respect um have been have been singing its praises and i'm like i can't let this game go i can't not play it i wanted to play it before alan wake one was a great game yeah but i thought i was just gonna skip past this one because i had no time i picked it up mm. have you, and i know you were saying you might do the same yeah. thing did you end up picking it up no i haven't yet but i will yeah andrew i think you should mm. i think this game is doing something very interesting in the space in an era of gaming when sequels like we're, we we talked ad nauseum about spider-man 2 yes and how great of a game it is it is incredibly well made but feels at times a little bit derivative mm. it feels very similar to a lot of other games that we've already played but like the best version of those games like spider-man 1 like spider-man 1 like batman arkham city oh okay yeah i guess so, but that yeah. too yeah that too yeah. a little bit of assassin's creed in there sure a little bit of shadows of mordor mm. that kind of open world style of game yeah um um but in an in an era where so many games feel so similar to one another alan wake 2 feels like a an incredible breath of fresh air and i don't always agree with the choices that they make in terms of gameplay in okay. terms of narrative in terms of the off the wall weirdness of it However, at least they're making choices Mm -hmm. and those choices Mm -hmm. are different from so many other games that I've played to the point where in many cases it feels unique. It feels like a game I've never played before. Weird things like when you're Alan Wake, you play as two characters in this, Saga and Alan Wake. And when you're playing as Alan Wake, at least in the the portion of the game I'm in, you're in these dark corridors and like in in this one, you're like in, in a city. It's like a dark version of New York. And there are these shadows that just kind of like, or just the regular yeah, version of New York, say, am I right? Jesus these days, Christ. Jesus Christ, oh indeed. Um, uh, please don't take the Lord's name in vain, though. Oh, you yeah. know how I feel about this. Yeah, I know. You're very religious. You're one of these people that are now getting into religion later in life, and it's like, oh, my God. Oh, not really. Oh, I did it again. Sorry. Oh, Andrew. Mm-hmm. That one's okay. Just Jesus' name. Don't say it. So say I G- can say it. You, you can, can say, say it. it. Why is that? Well, because he's my homeboy. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Because you accept him into your yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah. much. That makes sense. Alan Wake, real Tom Hanks energy. You can't. You got to say both names. Alan Wake, Tom Hanks. Yeah, you wouldn't say like Tom. Yeah. Or like, oh, the- Hanks stars in new, no. Honestly, both physically and in, in what you're saying, the opposite energy of Batista. Yeah, very... Or share, <laughs> shares. You're like, very- you're like, that's share. There's yes, no other there's no share. Way. No, no, Batista, no. when they're like, it's Dave Batista. I'm like, yeah, okay. It's like when Dwayne Johnson tried to go like for a bit, going like, I'm, I'm Dwayne Johnson. You're like, yeah. you're Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fuck that's off. the best we'll do for you. I'm Add sorry. more names. Yes. Yeah, it's, you can't remove the one thing we know about you. <laughs> Um, uh, no, so you're walking around this dark version of New York City, and there are these shades or like shadows, and they they're they're talking. I'm playing with my headphones on a lot of the time, so you get this like uh, surround sound that that the the PlayStation Five is really good at mimicking surround sound cool. with, if you have uh, uh, headphones in, and it'll they'll like whisper to you as you walk by, and they're ninety five percent of the time non hostile. They're okay. just shades that are there, and they'll say like Alan Wake or so, or like or really. Like, yeah, like, let me drown. Or like something weird like that. They oh. say like weird shit. But 5% of the time or so, they're, they are hostile and they oh. can hurt you. And so you get these situations where, oh my and, and this is this is not one-to-one with the game because there are a ton of jump scares and I think it's the worst part of the game. Like, nobody's surprised. The worst part of the game are the jump scares. Yeah, okay. But you get these moments that cause legitimate tension, not because something's popping out at you, but because... Be precisely because nothing is happening. Right. So you turn a corner and there's like six shades and they're all just like making those weird sounds and you're hearing them from behind you and right beside you and you're shining your flashlight at them and ammunition is so scarce that you, Peter Skarsgård, that you don't, you don't want to waste it by shooting a shade. So you just kind of wait for them to attack or not. And you mm. never know when you're safe or when you're not. You just have to be like, okay, 
They're not doing anything. Sounds terrible. It is so <laughs> scary. It is so fucking scary. Sounds arduous. It is. It's arduous. It's terrifying. Mm. There's an exploration element which requires you to kind of do some backtracking and stuff, which I'm not a, a huge fan of. But what they they've done, whether you like that decision or not, or so many of the other things that they put into the game, whether you like it or not, mm-hmm. it feels different. Yeah. And uh, and I I applaud Remedy for doing what they did, connecting all of their games like. Sam Lake, who is, I think he's the the owner of of Remedy or uh, okay. uh, president of Remedy. He's the guy who gave his voice to, or his his face to Max Payne. He's the face of Max Payne. Oh, wow. Uh, Max, yes, exactly. Andrew's imitating his face. He's in the game mm. playing a detective. Named Max Payne or Sam Lake? Sam Lake. Okay. But Sam Lake, like his face is in the game uh-huh. as a detective and his name in the game is uh, uh, Maximum Payne Word. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 honestly, something weird. Oh, Casey. Alex Casey, but mm-hmm. Alex Casey in the game ends up playing a uh, 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 the, the the same character model that plays a real detective in one story plays an actor in the next story <laughs> where he plays a detective in Alan Wake's book who is a hard boiled detective <laughs> dressed like Max Payne. So oh you have God. Sam Lake's face in a in a Max Payne character model talking like Max Payne, not in a Max Payne game, and he's called Alex Casey. It's this. It's the most Lynchian, like David Lynch kind of feeling I've ever had in a video game. And I don't know if I love it. I don't know if I hate it, but I am so intrigued and I can't wait to keep playing it. I, wow, that, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. To, man, Sam Lake, is that like a, is that, if you switch up the letters, is that Alan Wake? It's close. Um, True. Is, uh, yeah, oh, you know what? There's something very similar. Do you know that in, in uh, the movie Pearl Harbor, uh, mm. Michael, Michael Bay uh, put in John McClane in Die Hard? I just saw this video today. It kind of feels like what you're describing. <laughs> you're like, so who's this guy? Why is he here? Because was it was it Bruce Willis too? They just put the digital shot of him in the so background. So weird. What an otter, man. Oh, there's only one Michael Bay. I mean, here's my thing though. That's very unrealistic. Not because of the time gap. No. But because if he were there, mm-hmm. Pearl Harbor wouldn't have happened. Nope. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. He would have prevented it. He's like just at the end. He's like emperor, <laughs> all bloody coming out. Um, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I guess they're going for a continuous universe in some capacity. Yeah, it's it's a connected universe wow. for sure. There are characters like Control was a game that I played recently. That I I kind of said this on the podcast before, but like Alan Wake is a character mm-hmm. in Control. Yes, they make references to things that happen in Control. Uh, uh, there's like this janitor character who shows up in Alan Wake as him. The Federal Bureau of Control has its hands all over the Alan wow. Wake universe. It's I, people are going to start writing or, or making YouTube videos in the same way they make videos about from from software games, yeah. like how Dark Souls One is somehow connected to Sekiro, sure. is connected to Bloodborne, is connected to Elden Ring. People can start doing that with with Remedy games, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I applaud them. What whatever they're doing wow. is it has my attention, and uh, so you're enjoying it. I am I am really enjoying it. Wow. It stresses me the fuck out. And sometimes I hate how scary it is because it's so scary. But in spite of that, I'm like, I'm in. I, I want to keep playing. Well, don't, don't ruin it for people. But like, is the gameplay very similar to Alan Wake 1 or is it very different? It's it's similar in terms of the over the shoulder uh, uh, perspective. You have a flashlight, but the flashlight uh. doesn't die out as you're just using it. Oh. You have like charges that you can use to to make enemies weaker. Okay. So... You never feel like you're just in the darkness and your your ability to see is also your ability to attack, which I didn't like about Alan Wake mm-hmm. 1. And there are way fewer enemies, at least thus far in the game. I'm probably about eight hours in or something okay. like that. Wow. But those interactions that you do have with enemies feel that much more impactful because they're few and far between. Wow. That's yeah. really, really cool. Uh, so I'm going to keep updating. I, Please Andrew, do. I'm, I'm telling you, like, this is one you might want to consider checking uh, out because it's uh, it's it does something that a, not a lot of video games do. I, yeah, you might you might be tempting me. I've heard such good things, and I'm sure we're going to talk about Alan Wake too. Yes, you know, in our next segment where we talk about the Game Awards because it leads uh, with the most nominations at eight with Baldur's Gate in these uh, in these awards. Yeah, they have the, they're tied for the most nominations. Yeah, it's uh, you know for a year that that had so many good games, it it kind of makes it a little disappointing because all the the uh, categories are kind of predictable, but mm-hmm. I, I guess that's no different than than a lot of other years that we've had. Uh, we're going to be doing predictions. Do you think they're predictable? Sorry, you think they're predictable? The like the, this year? Yeah, I think I think for the most part, oh, I think boy. there are some some snubs. 
Mm. Uh, uh, the odd flub. Here flubs. Yeah, you're going to see some flubs. But I think, you know what the one unpredictable thing may have been Alan Wake 2 getting this many nominations prior to release. I don't know if anyone would have expected that, really. Mm. Um, what we're going to be talking about game of the year. We're going to be talking about game direction. We're going to be talking about narrative, uh, best ongoing, best indie, action, action adventure, RPG, adaptation and most anticipated not really as a prediction but some of these we're doing just so we can talk about the fact that these categories exist because Andrew what are your thoughts on the game awards in general the, I as a person that likes the Oscars I think having a sole award body yeah that you can look to and go this kind of spoke to what year it was sure I think is a healthy thing yeah I think the problem is outside of TV movies, you know, the Emmys and stuff like that, or stage production with the Tonys or things like that. It's really tough to find this as people all have lots of fledgling different awards yeah. and even podcasting. It's like, yep. I got a high, high heart radio. It's like, does that mean anything? Sure. I don't know. Um, you know, so it's a, I, I'm glad that there is something that is trying to put their foot down and go, this is the preeminent uh, gaming award show. Yeah. And, and at this point, this is, you know, for flaws or not, this is what we have. Definitely the biggest budget, definitely the most flash behind it, but it wasn't always the case. I mean, no. this, this is what we're talking about started as the spike TV video game. Awards, I was just you know? going like, to bring that up. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and love him or hate him. Jeff Keeley kind of kept this going. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's in its eighth year or something along those lines. Uh, and uh, you know, he gets a lot of flack. A lot of people call him like a, a, a PlayStation shill or a Nintendo shill. I don't agree with that. I don't agree. Like he he does imbue and whether this is his decision or someone else's decision, he does imbue the award ceremony with like a lot of commercialism. But I also just think that like that's kind of the state of gaming right now. Gaming, yeah. Gaming is a different model for finance than 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 movies and TV yep. does. It seems I, I would agree with you. And like, you know, l let's be real. If they didn't show ads for the big games coming up. Yeah these awards would probably not be on TV or not be shown at all. That's you know a good point. I mean? Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't watch them. Like, no. and I'm a huge gaming fan. I, I kind of don't even really care that much about yeah. them. You know what I mean? December 8th will come around the day after these awards. And the thing that you'll see from Kotaku or IGN or something like that will be about what trailers aired and what they yes. look like over who won. And that's always the case. And it's, and so much so that we have a category that's most anticipated. I'm so, I, I, this is the one where I wrote question mark, question mark. Let's, what let's, is that? Let's talk about this now. Sure, then. let's talk um, about it now. Um, most anticipated is uh, an announced game that has, what did I say? Most an anticipated. An <laughs> anticipated. I, <laughs> like, uh, I think I was almost going to say disappointed. <laughs> um, an Whoa. announced game that has demonstrably illustrated potential to push the gaming medium forward. Involved in this category, we have Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we have Hades II, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Star Wars Outlaws, and Tekken 8. Yeah, so what is this? So, like, you know, the, the thing is when you go, um, best indie game, you yeah. can look at a bunch of games uh -huh. and go like, hey, you know, this was pretty good, that was pretty good. This one's most anticipated. You are judging it based on your level of anticipation yes for the well this is like it it kind of makes and this is maybe one of the issues in general with with uh uh user voting like anyone can vote for the video game awards and you can vote in Fortnite. that's okay honestly that's where this should all take place i'm totally with you whereas people i think people will point that out going like what's a weird conflict it's like conflict of what that's where people are spending their time like and, video it's, games. and it's unique to video games. I think I think video games so often try to be other mediums, mm -hmm. and I think we need to embrace the differences. I think that's what makes gaming fascinating, and mm -hmm. that's what makes it interesting beyond movies and television. Uh, but you know, I, I think it's still such an early medium relative to the other mediums that it's trying to find a way to legitimize it by itself by association. But like, how cool would it be if it's like, okay, it's happening in the metaverse metaverse this year. Okay, it's happening in Fortnite this year. Yeah. Okay, it's happening in minecraft next year like let's find a way to to make these things kind of exciting beyond just being a televised event i agree with you and it kind of shows that like even at doing a televised event where someone is, reads nominees and then comes up and celebrates an award and says something to a microphone yeah makes you kind of feel like well this this is not this is so outdated they're just trying to do something that already existed exactly. previously and is dying in its own right like right no one watches the oscars That's anymore it. so it's we're like trying to we're trying to get we're like we we're running after the titanic as it's sinking like i've got a <laughs> ticket i've got a ticket let me on like what are we doing here? Yeah, it's like best MP3 vote with CDs, and you're like, well, what? Why would I do that? Does it make any sense? Is it the Microsoft Zoom? <laughs> By the way, I watched the killer 
Oh yeah, uh, um, uh, uh, David, David Fincher's, Fincher's yeah. most recent movie. Uh, uh, I think he has a Microsoft Zune in it. I think he does too. He has that or like a very or an iPad Nano. Oh, uh, maybe iPod that's Nano. What it is. Yeah, he's yeah. a very outdated technology because of I tracking. liked it. I liked it. Yes, I, I thought it was a good movie. Uh, uh, big fan. Highly recommend. It's weird. It's slow. Uh, the take that a hitman <laughs> would just be some like high school loser who sits in the shadows and makes fun of other people and listens yeah. to the Smiths. Very funny and 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 dark at the same time. The Smith thing is so good. It's so it? good. It's such a good touch. And uh, and the fact that they theme each scene around the song that is kind of playing like the oh, song. Oh, I didn't even pick the up song on song kind of speaks to what is happening. Oh, in that's the thing great. I didn't even pick up on it's that. really good. I just love. Yeah, I also love he's like he was like top of the class lawyer and he's like. They realize you make more money as an assassin. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I also like that you're watching, this is not a spoiler, is that you watch somebody that's very good at their job. That's mm -hmm. the point. And you watch them just constantly fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like very refreshing. Yeah, yeah, we um, all do. I'm glad you see, I'm glad you liked it. It's finally a good Netflix movie that yeah. came out that people can watch on Netflix. So. Yeah, it's so great. David Fincher's the killer. Michael Fassbender. It's good. Uh, so most anticipated, I, I don't, I, honestly, like here's the problem with this category is like there have been games that have been in this category for multiple years. Oh. Like I think Starfield <laughs> was in this category a couple times. Um, Starfield, that's so funny. Starfield, did that come out? It's not nominated it's for not anything. It's not nominated that's for so not weird. nothing on our our list was it nominated for i think i think it did get a nomination at some point somewhere in there but i not, don't know not for the categories we're talking about. i was trying to read about it because i think there was also like last last nomination you vote on what's the last one in or something like that and i think one of them was starfield and i think that's uh because the other one that snubbed it we can just say now is yeah. hogwarts legacy yeah not a single nominee too which is interesting because a lot of people played that game so you know we'll get to a few of them but yes most anticipated yeah um do you have, by the way, like, never mind this list, do you have a most anticipated game for next year? Not yet. Yeah, neither I feel do like I. I burned all my shots on the ones that have come out this I'm, year. I'm honestly okay. If actually, it's for me, it's Hades too, like, by a, by a long shot. Um, but I am totally okay if we have a bad year next year in gaming. I'm like, to I need to catch up on games. Yeah, as Give I me just all year to play Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, I I'll talk about this next week. Yeah. I finished Far Cry 6. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Just in time for the game board. This is like somebody, if they just came back, you're like, have you guys seen Jurassic Park? <laughs> it's really good. And you're like, oh, good. Yeah. I like, do that to you all the time. I know you do. It's I think like, I like love last it. week I was like, uh, have you seen Rosemary's Baby? <laughs> <laughs> you did see that movie from the early 70s. Yeah. I, I love, I'm, I'm saying Far Cry 6 is like, is this what, is this the Game Awards 2019? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just finished it. Oh, great. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. In a we'll little talk bit. about um, next. So, so let's let's do it then. Uh, I don't know that we need to give a prediction for most anticipated because to me, this that is kind of a sham. W okay, then how about that? What which game are you most anticipating of those five? Hades two. Yeah, that's my thought. Easy, easy choice. Uh, uh, the one that's not listed there that because I guess we never know when it's going to come out is Hollow Knight Silk yeah. Song. That would be the one. But again, uh, GTA. Uh, is that going to come out? Oh yeah, I guess most anticipated doesn't have to be coming up in the next year. But yeah, I guess there's just not enough that we've seen about GTA. I just well, the night they're doing this, the trailer comes out. Yes, so that's that is, and it doesn't feel like a coincidence. That no, uh, is the it two good, of them almost work together. Is it going to be debuted at the awards? Who knows? It doesn't feel like something Rockstar would do, but it could be. That's a really good question. Yeah, that's going to be so funny when we're doing this again next year. This the gaming awards and going defending champion most anticipated. Yes, GTA <laughs> comes out again three times in a row. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no one could beat it for most anticipated it'll be like spore will write spore it's just year <laughs> after year another fucking delay okay let's talk about it then andrew we've got uh uh let's not start with game of the year yeah do you want to start from the bottom up let's start from, from our list up. that's a good idea uh best adaptation so this is the creative work faithfully and authentically adapting video games to another medium again what a strange this is this is not the oscars where you have best adapted screenplay yeah this is what other medium took something that we made and did it really well. And we're judging it based on its authenticity and quality, I think. Yes. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 it's it's uh, faithfully and auth faithfulness and authenticness. Authenticity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, both work. Um, can you read the nominees and then we'll talk about the them? The nominees are Castlevania Nocturne, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us, Super Mario, and Twisted Metal. And so if you're if you're staying at home, you don't know what we're talking about. The TV and movie versions of those yes. things, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's not the actual Last of Us or Gran Turismo. Uh, obviously, it's Gran Turismo. Uh, David <laughs> Harbour is a, a gem. Orlando Bloom, wonderful. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I don't I can't imagine how it doesn't go to Last of Us. Um, also, where's Five Nights at Freddy's? Well, maybe like, maybe like, it came out too late. 
it could be because like not my choice for sure. We had a whole episode on it, but I have to for a faithful adaptation. Gran Turismo. Like, yeah, it's a movie about the fucking game. It's about a guy playing playing the game. game. It's not about the game. I also like Super Mario. You got to do it so that like you can get attention. It made a lot of money, right? It's kind of thing. But but authentic and to the game. No. Okay. I also feel like uh, gamers who votes on this, by the way, I couldn't figure this out. Uh, uh, We do. Oh, so it's just fan voting. I, I think I, I I'm assuming it's not just fan voting, but okay. fan votes have a, a big a big. There's uh, a weight yes. of fan. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right, that's totally <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but is that I feel like outwardly the video game community would be like, well, not Super Mario Bros. We all saw it three times, but but not that. Not not our game. It you know? was fun. Oh, but that's totally that's fun. why this is it, like it has to be the Last of Us, right? That's 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 my choice because that, it, it intersects both quality and and as well and people actually watched it. Quality for sure, uh, and 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 uh, and I agree. I think I think it's 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 adding something to the story that you don't necessarily get with the gameplay because you know as good as the voice acting is, as good as the the motion capture is, and all that. The, it being so story focused and so not combat focused really lets them flesh out the humanity of mm-hmm. the last of us, which the video game couldn't do because they have to allow you to play the game. Um, so I think, I think as far as like this being a weird category, the last of us deserves an award, whether it should be given at the game awards or the, the Emmys. TV I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I imagine, oof, man, this, I mean, this year's Emmys is stacked. I don't know. That almost like is something we should, address eventually because how much of uh, representation there is like things of the last of us. Yeah. Did you see just because now we don't have the mushroom club, so I have to insert things uh, yeah. like this See, Pedro Pascal is going to be Reed Richards. I did see fantastic. that. Yeah. Great. Fine. Whatever. Uh, he's good enough actor. Who cares? Uh, I, his next year of filming is gladiator Two, uh, another movie that I forget off the top of my head. Now the last of us season two, and he's going to start playing Reed Richards. Is this, he going to be the highest paid actor in Hollywood? <laughs> He's the hardest working. He's, yeah. This is like Jude Law 2004 stuff. Well, like, also, this is, is he is he not recording another season of uh, or filming another season of The Mandalorian? Oh because shit! He I does a think lot about of that. work for that. <laughs> he needs three whole days on The Mandalorian <laughs> season, whatever. Four. Two of which are determining what goes in his trailer. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to decide when he can take off his helmet. They need to like write his stuff yeah, around yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't he also like re-promise to like keep his helmet on? Like they did that whole ceremony and stuff. Man, imagine being Pedro reading that page of the script. Like bonus. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Like in part of our next negotiation, like make sure. There is some technicality. He can't. It's fused to his head. How about yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> it's fused to his head. Okay. Okay. Episode three: severe burns. <laughs> yeah. Almost unrecognizable. Rogu burns. will snap in half and be ripped into two if his helmet comes off. Oh, okay. Perfect. Well, I'll keep it on that. Episode three: fight stars. Vader <laughs> crushes his trachea. Don't even recognize his voice. Can't speak. <laughs> Robot voice. <laughs> He's got episode this. four: McDonald's Planet gets real, real big. This is probably like when he meets with Kevin Feige and he's like. Reed Richards, that's the invisible man, right? And they're like, <laughs> nice try, buddy. We already got you on the Star Wars shit. He's like, ah, shit. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Oh, God. Uh, okay, so best adaptation. We're both going for the last one. Yeah, ones. last of us. Okay, uh, now we're starting to get into uh, some video legitimate games? awards, some video game awards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, RPG. Uh-huh. And as we go here, I think we need to talk about uh, uh, the strange elements of categorization in movies. You know how the Golden video Globes, ha- sorry, yeah, in video yeah. games, you know how the Golden Globes has uh, oh, okay. uh, musical and comedy? Musical and comedy. Which is also, what a weird thing to conflate, musicals and comedies. They have nothing to do with one another. And also, what goes into those categories is often inscrutable cat a category fraud is a big thing because also who's the lead and who's the supporting you kind of look at who's yes. in each pool and you're like well, i think i can win supporting so put yeah, me yeah, yeah 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 supporting like my favorite always is like nurse jackie was a comedy and you're like yes i didn't laugh once in one season <laughs> the bear is going into comedy and they're like probably because they look at the dramas they're like yeah we'll go as a comedy yeah 100 percent. oh okay uh maddie, although i think i think oh maddie matheson maddie he's yeah. he's funny yeah, i'll put yeah, him yeah, in yeah, there yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah cousin Cut, yeah, uh, good. That was good. So RPG, uh, uh, they they define the category of RPG as rich player customization and progression. Now, RPG role playing game can mean a lot of different things. I'm going to read the the nominations, okay. and then I'm going to propose a, a a potential issue with okay. it. Okay? okay, so the nominations for best RPG: uh, Baldur's Gate Three, Final Fantasy Sixteen, mm-hmm. Lies of P, Sea of Stars, and Starfield. There's Starfield's nomination. Oh, there it is. Um, the the oh, nomination the, <laughs> nomination yeah <laughs> the the thing that i find strange about this it's very weird that lies of p and sea of stars are in the same category yeah 
because it, you know one is is like a JRPG and it's uh, uh, a Sea of Stars I'm talking about and mm-hmm. and you know not a ton of customization in terms of characters and and look and feel and and all that but you know traditional what what goes into your part who who goes into your party uh, 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 what attacks do you have and all that stuff Lies of P. Mm-hmm. In 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 a a world where action adventure exists, mm-hmm. I'm just like, why why wouldn't that be like? There is a skill tree, uh, uh, not not necessarily skill tree, but you can put stats into abilities in in Lies of P, just like you can in Dark Souls and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You can also do that in Jedi Survivor, and you can also do that in Spider Man Two. Neither of which are in RPG. Both like if Jedi Survivor. And and lies of P are in different categories. I fundamentally don't know how we're supposed to reconcile the differences between RPG and action adventure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I totally know what you mean. I I, I wonder if the uh, judges panel, let's say, or something like that, is deciding which categories things can get put into, or if people are are putting their names into True. going we're an RPG. The thing that you're talking about with the Golden Globes is like comedy, musical, or drama. You can't be in both. Yes, you, know, you have to decide. And so right. I wonder. There, you'll see this as we keep reading nominees. People show up multiple times. Yes, and you're like, I wonder how this works. Uh huh. I don't know. But but not as much when it comes to categories. The one that that brings a huge question because because you mentioned earlier like you know you look at indies and you know what that is and all that stuff you think you know what indies are you really don't know what indies are based on uh uh the I'm game so awards. To say that. yeah uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit so for rpg then you know my qualms aside uh baldur's gate 3 final fantasy 16 lies of pc of stars and starfield do you have a prediction for which one wins this one well this is this is the same voting strategy or betting strategy i have for like a big award shows you kind of pick a narrative uh-huh. and then you go with it mm-hmm. and you start saying, I think this game is going to have a big night and it's Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. And so I choose it in RPG because it might show up in a few other categories. I agree. I think I think Baldur's Gate 3, I'm I'm picking it here. If if you choose a narrative, the narrative might be that it doesn't win game of the year and a lot of people would be very upset about that. The other narrative you might get is guys, we have to throw Starfield a bone because oh. Xbox needs representation at the Game Awards. Oh. But I'm still going to go with Baldur's Gate 3 oh, too, as, as my prediction yeah. here. Um, uh, in terms of what you th- what you want to win, do you have a, a suggestion for that? Well, this is tough. It's I haven't played a lot of these games, but Baldur's Gate is, you know, everyone and their mother keeps telling me about how much fun they have playing it. Yeah. Um, I had a friend that hurt themselves uh, recently, or not recently, when the game came out, and they had uh, hurt their leg or something oh, like okay, that, right? Oh, okay, okay. And... Uh, and they had to play Baldur's Gate while their leg up because they wouldn't stop playing it because they're like, I have to play this game. It just came out and stuff like that. <laughs> and they, the the setup that they had shown of how they're doing it was completely bizarre. And I thought, yeah, that's enough to get this RPG of the year. I think. I think I think that's a that's a solid enough argument for it. Um, I I I think of all the 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 RPGs I played, I didn't play a ton of time with Baldur's Gate, probably about twelve hours or so, but. What a fascinating game. What a, a monumental achievement mm. in narrative and storytelling. I, I would love to see Baldur's Gate 3 win. It's also a, a really nice uh, story for a studio that was largely uh, overlooked, especially by Microsoft when it came out in all their, their email leaks. Uh, it's great to see them oh, getting yeah. uh, 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 some recognition. Uh, that's great. Yeah, so Baldur's Gate, well, we both have that for RPG then. For, for win, for who we think's going to win and who we want to win. Yes, okay, great. Oh, Let's go, go. Uh, action adventure. And we're only going to give one point though based on who we think is going to win. That's yeah. that's kind of our, our yes. test. Yes, yeah. Yes, we're not giving emotional heart points right. about who we <laughs> want to win. Yeah, this isn't Sea of Stars. We're yeah. not giving emotional <laughs> HP. No, and this is also not Life of P because I'm not lying about these. Lies of P. I don't see. I, I'm not lying about this. <laughs> now, now I feel like Andrew, what's happening to your nose right now? I, I don't want to talk about Andrew, it. Andrew, what is going no, on? No, don't ask about my robot arm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pinocchio's favorite robot. Yeah, right, famous, everyone knows. famous robot arm. Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, and the yeah, robot yeah, yeah. arm. Yeah, makes an appearance. Jiminy Cricket? Mm-hmm. And Liza P. Is Pinocchio public domain? Must be at this it point. It must be because it's not Disney. Yeah, they wouldn't go to Disney no, and be no. like, I'm going to destroy people. Well, no. Also, uh, there were like seven Pinocchio movies that came out in the last year That's as well. That's true. So I, I'm, I'm assuming it's public domain. Yeah. This is like, uh, uh, oh man. I Santa Claus? Yeah. It's like Santa Claus. Yeah. Public domain. Mm. Except for the Coca-Cola Corporation that has yeah. uh, such a tight grip on the yeah. Santa Claus uh, image. No, it's like when, uh, I, I forget the what the phenomenon's called, but when two things come out at the exact same time. Twinning? The exact, yeah, twinning, sure. They, you know, like uh, like Deep, deep Impact and Armageddon. Thank you very much. About asteroids hitting Earth. Um, Volcano and Dante's Peak. And Dante's Peak. Uh, the Day After Tomorrow 2012, but frozen planets and like apocalypse stuff. Right. You uh, know. Uh, Krampus and the version of Krampus I watched 
which was filmed on an iPhone. <laughs> I so these things come out and then you're like okay Robert Zemeckis has got a, a truly uh, haunted doomed version of Pinocchio yes there was the uh, yeah, Guillermo del Toro, Toro Pinocchio, Pinocchio and now we have the video game Pinocchio yeah yeah all within uh, honestly 18 months of each other Andrew it's Pinocchio season spelt S-Z-N <laughs> season I just people just demanding more Pinocchio we need more Pinocchio <laughs> yeah people demanded it so much they saw none of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true actually I did watch the game with the Toro it was Pinocchio. good it was good it was good um um action adventure mm. this is defined as combining combat with traversal and public puzzle solving in my mind that's Sea of Stars and that's Lies of P but we'll leave that aside oh, good point um in this one we have Alan Wake 2 we have Spider-Man 2, we have Resident Evil 4, we have Jedi Survivor, and we have Tears of the Kingdom. Um, this is a tough category. Very tough. This is a really good category. Um, this is up there with Game of the Year. This is this almost is Game of yes, the Year. Yes, within, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, especially because, you know, RPG, with the exception of Baldur's Gate 3, I don't know that there are any other Game of the Year uh, I don't believe so. entries in there. Yeah, so, okay, so I'll, I'll go because you you started with, sure. with, uh, with RPG. Action adventure, I think that the winner of this one is going to be, I think it's going to be Alan Wake 2. Okay. Um, and that's because this is, a lot of people are going to be upset with the way that I phrase this if I don't phrase it correctly. Tears of the Kingdom and Spider-Man 2 are both sequels. Resident Evil 4 is a flat out remake. Uh, Jedi Survivor is a sequel. And I know that Alan Wake 2 is a sequel as what? well, but it feels so different from the first one. Yeah. It may as well be a brand new game. And that argument you can use in particular with Tears of the Kingdom, but there's something about the explicit adult narrative of Alan Wake 2 that I kind of feel like if it were the Game Awards deciding and the Game Awards wanting to become like make adult this medium mm -hmm, that word mm -hmm. that we all love they're going to give it to something like alan wake 2 and be like see we can do art as well yeah and i think there's a yeah. lot of people pulling on that thread will the nintendo supporters come out and and just bring tears of the kingdom all the glory that if it wins good good on it but uh but i'm, I'm predicting alan wake 2 for this one my prediction is going to be because of the puzzle side of it is going to be tears of the kingdom yeah uh, i think you know it's it's tough because alan wake just came out and it's not to take anything away from it but is more to say about like that, you know, when uh, when Tears of the Kingdom came out, you know, people wouldn't shut up for a full month about this yeah. and be like, well, this is the best game ever played. Right. Well, I didn't feel that way. Yeah. I liked it. It wasn't the best game ever played. I think this very much accurately describes the category uh, of what they're looking for. Yeah. A little bit of action, a little bit of puzzle, perfect, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, and it might, Nintendo might not have a ton of representation in winners. Yep. So that is why I'm going to be going with uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I, I think it's a, it's kind of a safe bet. Okay. And, and I, I, I wonder if we're going to get landslides or a kind of like a specking of, oh. of, of awards given out to different games just to show like in a year with so many good games, yes. like just give everything something kind of. Yeah. It's um, amazing. Think about like, think about the games we played this year at home. Think about that D bats and think about the ones we haven't said yet. Yes. Like, exactly. isn't it crazy how good this year has been? hundred percent. Hi-Fi rush hasn't been said. Uh, Andrew of action adventure. Do you have one that you want to win? Um, yeah, because this is like actually a category I played a majority of the games. I I do actually think Tears of the Kingdom probably yeah. deserves it. It is kind of a, it is an achievement, especially on the console it's on. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I'd probably go Tears of the Kingdom. What about you? Uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Oh for yeah, me. you for, do. For, for my preference of game of the year, I think it would be Tears of the Kingdom. Alan Wake Two, like I said, does a lot differently. It, this may just be because I haven't beaten the game yet. Mm. But uh, Tears of the Kingdom, what what the 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 large strides that Alan Wake makes in narrative relative yeah. to every other game is dwarfed by the uh, the improvements on game design that Tears of the Kingdom makes and okay. just the staggering scope of that game. That makes uh, sense. I think it does it so well. So moving to the next one, we've got action by definition of the Game Awards. It's games that focus primarily on combat. We've got Armored Core 6. We've got Dead Island 2, Ghost Runner 2, Hi-Fi Rush, and Remnant 2. Um, I found this to be the weakest category of the ones we're doing. Yeah, I think, I think it is. In spite of that, you have some really good games, mm -hmm. like especially Armored Core 6 is a FromSoft game that I the first FromSoft game I haven't played in since Dark Souls 1, I think pretty much um, Remnant 2 
is is a game that that's gotten a, a ton of acclaim. Hi Fi Rush kind of like came and went, but when it came out, I think it was on Game Pass. People just absolutely loved it. Dead Island Two, another one that was just like you, no one had time to play it, but those who did seemed to really appreciate it. And Ghost Runner Two, kind of like a niche game, but again, a very vocal amount mm. of fans out there. Um, do you uh, want to take this one, Andrew? Who do you think is going to take this uh, this category? Uh, for this category, I am going to be taking Remnant Two. Okay. I, I just, I you know, it, it was really tough splitting hairs in this one because there were so many that you're like, well, this is okay, and this yeah. is okay, and this is okay. And it's not to say anything away from them, but whereas I feel like, uh, you know, we're doing action adventure, there's like really peaks and valleys here where you're like, man, there's some like, uh, best best of the yep. year kind of qualities. This this category didn't have the game of the year qualities yes. to it, so it's a little bit tougher to uh, to gauge what people's reaction would be. And that's why I went with Remnant too, though. I I all, this is this is kind of like saying already getting into who I want to mm -hmm. win, but who I want to win is Remnant Two. Um, I think this is going to be Microsoft coming out and stealing a category. I think they have to come away with something, and I think it's going to be. Uh, uh, Hi-Fi Rush hi in the action rush, category. Wow. Yeah, it's this is like I'm taking out a flyer like you as as the uh, as the host of uh, <laughs> uh, the old Losing Money with Andrew Bass. Yeah, this would be a there. The odds on this would be very very much in my favor, but I'm gonna take it just just to see because I mm -hmm. something tells me that Microsoft is coming away with something and it might be this one. Okay, I, I see that's a strategic pick and yes. I like that. That, yeah. that. that makes total sense. So, well, there you go. What about who you who you want to win this one? Well, I don't know. I heard great things about Armor Core. Yeah, same with me. And I'm kind of like, well, that if, you know, like, I don't know. I always trust, I always trust the people around me to make opinions like yes. that. And I just, at Armor Core, I heard really good things about yeah, so. Yeah, heard yeah. Heard, honestly, great things about a lot of these games. So, well, uh, Dead so Island, we'll I want to play. Yes. Like, that's a game that's like right down my alley. So, Look, looks like a ton of fun. Yeah. Too. Uh, let's move to, we'll go through a little bit, a uh, little bit quicker here because I think we're running a little bit oh, low on time. Okay. But, we have to have this discussion. This this next category is best indie. Okay. Now they describe it as outstanding creative technical uh, creative uh, uh, or technical in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. Now, when you think indie, you think of kind of like these smaller games, like like in music. Indie is a genre of music. It's not necessarily based on the label that produces the game. Game and I think the Game Awards have made distinctions between independent games and indies. However, they name the category best indie as opposed to like best independent game. So it's really conflated. And and I don't know where to, where to stand with this. Larian Studios, which makes Baldur's Gate three, is completely self funded. So are independent? They, are they like shouldn't they be independent? Yeah, like so if you're not Microsoft or or Sony or Nintendo, yeah, are you an independent? the like traditional publishers yeah if, if you're not if you're not like either first or second party or something you would think it would be something along those lines but dave the diver which is nominated their parent company is like a multi-billion dollar corporation <laughs> so what are what are we talking about here? and I, I know that word traditional is doing a lot of heavy lifting yeah, the traditional yeah. publisher system how but we see it yeah exactly yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. so it's it's tough to say regardless it's a very strong uh it's a very strong one here um i also do want to mention there's best debut indie game which is so strange because that's like rookie of the year award in in uh like in the oscars for like best new director like yeah best you wouldn't think about breakout like star that. or yeah, something like yeah, that yeah, yeah. it's it, that's so funny We're, that has been a thing that they've talked about in the oscars by the way but oh, really? um just because it, it would break a, a cycle of like same people getting the awards true, all the time true. but i agree so this is so funny with this category uh, you know like i was like i was saying i i ask I ask people around me things like that and this one i went to uh, a pretty bright host of a good podcast called The Retrograde that I liked. Mm. And so all year he's been talking about pretty much every one of these games. Yes, in this, this, this is my category. This is absolutely your category. Yes. So let, me, let me read the nominations yes. quick. Uh, we've got Cocoon, we've got Dave the Diver, we've got Dredge, Sea of Stars, and Viewfinder. Viewfinder being the only game on this list that I haven't played. Um, Can I say mine? Yeah. As almost a guess of what I thought you sure. would say. Based yeah, on yeah, yeah. the things that you've said to me yeah. and the D-pads at home over the last year, which game did I think impressed you the most yeah is it cocoon it is cocoon hot uh, damn cocoon is arguably game of the year Ooh. i can't believe it didn't get no i mean i can believe yeah. it yeah. this is a very strong year but to me when when and we'll talk about this when we get to the actual category but cocoon does so much in terms of technical mm -hmm. and narrative achievement I talk about Alan Wake and all. I keep bringing up this game, and uh, uh, but but what it does that's different from a lot of other games. Cocoon is 
30 times more different than Alan Wake in, in terms of how it tells its story and the puzzles that it asks you to solve and the muscles that you use in your brain, even though your brain's an organ. Don't question me on that one. Um, uh, but yeah, I would say Cocoon. I would say Cocoon. Come with me, Andrew. Don't do wow, it. What the <laughs> hell? That's like Chris Butman things. I mean, I don't know. Is that Bumstead. Bumstead. <laughs> Chris Butman. Well, Butman. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I want to give a shout out to Dave the Diver, which was an unbelievable game. Yeah. Uh, Dredge. You love Dredge too. I love Dredge. Yeah. Uh, sea of Stars was, was a phenomenal achievement. Uh, and then viewfinder from what I've seen looks almost like a new kind of portal game where like it, it that, that puzzle system cool. looks fantastic as well. So that's uh, amazing. Yeah. But I'm going to go with cocoon as who I think is going to win and, and who I want to win. Perfect. And I, I will double, I'm going to stick with the people that know stuff and I'm going to say the exact same thing. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, let's go best ongoing an interesting category mm -hmm. here. Outstanding development of ongoing content that involves the player experience over time. I think this is actually, whereas I think a lot of these categories are kind of full of bullshit. Yeah. To be honest, where they're like, uh, how do we nominate these games? Sure. This one feels like the most uh, on the pulse of video games in general, instead of a game that comes out as a single installment and go, you play this game, you purchase it, and you play yeah. it, and that's really good. There is more and more games like the nominees you're about to say where it is like, well, there's there's no end to this. Yeah. It's hopefully going to go on forever. Andrew, I totally agree with you. And I, I think, think this, this is the most game awards award that you can give. It's the most unique to them. So, yeah. And I'm glad they're acknowledging these things. 100%. And uh, yeah, the nature of so many great games uh, uh, is is kind of represented in this. So you got nominations, Apex, Apex Legends, mm -hmm. Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy 16, which shame on me, but I don't know what they mean by best ongoing. I, I don't either. By actually. There. Uh, you got Fortnite and Genshin Impact, uh, um, you know, notably missing Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2. Uh, a big, big drop off and, and not surprising to me. Uh, any Activision Blizzard. Yeah, like true. Have, I, I feel like there is some retribution in some capacity of like, there was a big thing about this last year where all the the allegations and I guess real, I don't think they're allegations anymore, uh, against Activision Blizzard working environments yeah. uh, came out and there was a lot of like, oh, what are we going to do? Or yes. should we address it or yep. not address it? Ultimately, I, this is a pretty vanilla uh, organization. They yeah. do not address things so much so that uh, there was, a, I now forget the game, they said, we're going to, can we talk about uh, the Middle East? And they're like, no. Oh, and really? they're like, really? We're withdrawing our we're withdrawing our game. It was a game I hadn't heard of, so keep that in mind. Sure. But they're like, well, we don't want to be a part of this then. Like, if you're not, if you can't say what you, you're feeling. Yeah. And yet, Blizzard Activision, no games nominated, and you go, hmm, I wonder if that's related. It, it, the most glaring non-nomination for Blizzard Activision is Diablo 4. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, for ongoing game, maybe it had RPG to have existed or, before, yeah. but yeah, like... If that game doesn't show up next year, I mean, you know, if ever, all, all remains the same, yes, uh, uh, that would be very surprising because mm -hmm. a lot of people really, really love that game. There was a time when I think that was as played a game as the likes of Tears of the Kingdom wow. and and some of the others. So everyone I knew was playing that game. Crazy. Um, um, so best ongoing, uh, do you have a, a vote for this one? Well, yes and yes. So like, I think Cyberpunk is going to take this mm -hmm. uh, because uh, a lot of people are having a, <laughs> like, uh, uh, I, I love you. I never, I never meant to hurt you kind of conversation with Cyberpunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. we tore you down and now I'm like, but I love you. Sure. Don't worry about love that. Love a good comeback story. A good comeback story. Idris Elba, you know, like there's yep. star power, Keanu Reeves. So I think that would be the one. And like, who do I want to win? Mikey. My heart's my heart. It's it, gotta be. It's gotta be Fortnite. It's gotta be Fortnite. Um, I kind of find this, like, here's, <laughs> so I just said, I just said the whole Game Awards should take place in Fortnite. I'm about to say something that contradicts that, which is how is this not a conflict of interest? A uh, dramatic conflict of interest? That's why I'm saying they're voting in Fortnite. Yes. Would you uh, imagine just getting to the voting pool and be like, not Fortnite? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm I'm gonna pick Fortnite in this one. Okay. I think, you know, big nod to Cyberpunk, uh, uh, you know, ongoing support, whatever. The reason I don't want it to be that is because so much of the work that went into it was stuff that should have been done at launch. Like you can't release a piece of shit. And I know a lot of people love cyberpunk, but you can't release something that's broken and then fix it three years later and yeah. then get a pat on the back for it. And I know cyberpunk Phantom Liberty is like a, a, a great achievement. It's a great, great achievement. game. Yes. But to talk about ongoing support, it's like, no, 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 you shouldn't have needed that much support for, for a game. That's the thing is like, it's kind of like it, it it's asking for forgiveness and you're like, that's nah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's a, here's a, here's a, uh, an award. I don't think, I think we missed it. It says most broken game at 
launch. <laughs> That's weird. That's interesting. What are I got your nominations for that? Oh, I, well, uh, Cyberpunk, I only wrote down my winner. Sorry oh, about that. Oh, okay, okay. I okay. have a couple more that I think we didn't say. Best studio layoffs uh, <laughs> and most toxic fan base. Oh, God. Most toxic fan base. Uh, uh, that one might just be, honestly, I'm going to take a, I'm going to go out and, and fucking say this, even though a lot of people are going to hate it. Sony fans, <laughs> Sony fans, chill the fuck out. You're so combative. You're so happy that Microsoft didn't get a nomination at the game awards. Like it is, it's like you achieved something. <laughs> Why would you want another studio to do poorly that's bad for your games as well yeah i just i like sony fans are are and i'm sure microsoft fans are are you know equal on in in some way maybe it's just the feed that i see but like sony fans want no one else to do well mm -hmm. and that is baffling to me i want there to be i want there to be amazing games that i can't play because that will help the games that i can play if 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 sony's releasing great games microsoft needs to step it up nintendo needs to step it up and that works in in a trifecta like i don't know i don't understand them i yeah I, I i agree with you we i think this is something we talked about like in the beginning of the podcast i've never understood people that were like i am this console this is my personality yes. and i want every other one to be burned. to fail yeah like yeah. that doesn't make any sense at least in sports where you're like I support this team and uh, I'm against that team. Well, there's natural competition. They That's play each it. other. That makes sense. You cannot win if they win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I need them to lose for me to win. Yes. You don't need the Xbox to go out of business for you, all. for Sony to succeed or you know, Microsoft to succeed. You know, like it just, it never makes any sense to me. And also I think it like, we're saying it's the most toxic fan base. So prove us right. But come at us like that's yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, yeah like exactly. that's it. you win that's yeah it. you know what i yeah. mean yeah and, um, and i'll already say the thing that everyone's gonna say you want the company to fail whose entire identity in your opinion is buying up ip and companies fair because yeah if my argument is i want more competition microsoft is going against that yeah totally understand it but i also would like to see like there's a lot of shit going on with the game industry. You talked about all the layoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of good companies are going to go under. Uh, uh, 505 Studios, I think it is, just basically said uh, uh, that they're only going to focus on like sequels and stuff. Oh. And they can't. They they laid off 30% of their workforce. The, like These are all things we have to consider. And it's possible that you're going to need a company like Microsoft to buy your studio if yep. you want to stay afloat. I don't know. Com Competition is good, but it, it, I think the system that we've developed is untenable. Where yes. these games require so long to make and yep. so much money to make that you can't it's not like it's not like a couple of people could work in a garage and go like we're gonna make a game yeah you know what i mean like that unless it's an indie yeah like unless it's, you know, but what's an indie these days that's you know, true I mean, that's yeah, true okay. uh let's go to best narrative andrew mm -hmm. outstanding storytelling and narrative development you've got alan wake 2 you've got baldur's gate 3 you've got cyberpunk phantom Liber liberty which i find very interesting yeah, that it's making its appearance again final fantasy 16 and spider-man 2 um i'll go first with this one because you go first to the last one uh as much as i love Alan Wake 2's storytelling Ooh. and narrative development, what Baldur's Gate does is as staggering to me as the mechanical developments Tears of the Kingdom has made, the narrative developments that, that Baldur's Gate 3 makes and how it has to factor in all the decisions you make relative to all of your uh, 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 stats, relative to all the, 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 the characters in your party and how they've already interacted with each other. It has to factor in every weird ass decision that its player base might make just to see if the game is paying yeah. attention and it does it phenomenally. I, I just, it, the the writing behind that game and the amount of work and the scope of it is staggering to me. Yeah. I kind of think it has to be Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, it's funny. I think I see our strategies now starting to intertwine a little bit uh -huh. because mine is Alan Wake 2. Oh, cool. For very similar reasons. You know what I mean? This game is built not backwards on a, the idea of a storytelling. You know yeah. what I mean? Of like that the, the, the environment around it is all getting, pro, uh, you know, propulsion towards uh, the end of a story or to move the story yep. around instead of these games that are more like meandering into like find the sure. corner and this guy will tell you something and you're like oh that's interesting so i think alan wake in if the thing that you were gonna give it its gold star for would be in its storytelling yeah this is the award this is the award that you're gonna give it for yeah i, I that that makes a ton of sense and if it wins i i will uh, i, I you will would, give me a point i will give you a point i have to andrew <laughs> contractually i have to give you a point it'd be so funny if you and i back and forth just going here you go and here you are thank <laughs> Can you I have that point back because yeah oh, yeah. oh no 100 percent. no, no not that one specifically no. i need another give a favorite one okay yeah um uh because it, it just depends on the definition of narrative and if narrative includes the very video game thing of choice yeah then Baldur's Gate Fair. 3 is great but yeah. if you're if you want to just be told a great story in a way you've never heard it before then it seems more like an Alan Wake thing uh, so we'll see what, what the fans uh kind of fall on there uh game direction 
Yep. Outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Uh, you've got Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Super Mario Wonder, and Tears of the Kingdom. Um, game direction, Andrew, do you have a... Yeah, on I found this this uh, this award to be one of the more interesting ones to choose yeah. because it really is going to take more of a pulse of what people think about video games yeah. as a whole right now, yeah. which is the direction they wish more video games would go towards. It's yep. going like, wow, look at this. Uh, this is why I think, again, Tears of the Kingdom is probably going to win. Okay. Uh, I just... It's a very revered team of people that make that game that is, you know, widely renowned in the video game industry. Um, to be perfectly honest, it was between this and Wonder because I think Wonder people want to throw a little bit yes. of a bone to. And once again, very imaginative, very does things that you can't believe. If anything exists inside of video games that is set in stone, it's Mario. Yeah. And and all of a sudden they go, oh, they did something new with Mario that didn't piss off people. That's You're true. Like, That's pretty amazing. But I think they did the same thing with Zelda. I think I think pushing. Uh, their puzzles and like, you know, the, with the hand and be able to rotate yep. things and, you know, the creative side of it. That's why I went with best direction there. Okay. I like it. I'm, I'm, I was very close to going with tears of the kingdom. Oh, yeah? I'm actually going to go with super Mario wonder. <sighs> and it's because I'm that. maybe I'm purposely misunderstanding direction, mm -hmm. but as a director to guide your viewer, participant, player, whatever it is, the yep. person who you know is going to be consuming your media, to be able to guide them emotionally, know what they're going to be doing, know what they're going to be thinking, and make sure they're never feeling stuck, to give them an experience that is curated for them. Yes. Um, it's Mario. You're moving from left to right. You don't go in another direction. You're just going left to right, and along that path, you're hitting exactly the points they want you to, and in that way, it almost feels like an on-rails game, even yeah. though it's, it, it isn't, and I think that it's so concisely done. We talk about Mario as the type of game that uh, and, and has always been intuitive. Like There's something about picking up a, a controller and playing Mario that you feel you were born innately with the the understanding of how to play it. And that comes, in my mind, completely down to game direction. When I'm wandering around a dark hallway in Alan Wake just to see if there's an unlockable, that isn't the director telling me what, no. to, you know what I mean? No, like that's yeah. that's almost like, go do your own thing for a bit. We're going to prepare for something up ahead. And when you want to get back to yes. it, it's over here. Mario is like, no, no, no. Come on, we're going down this path. We're going here. Come on, keep, keep going, spared. keep going. It's like they they are specifically telling me what to do and I would love to see them win that one. So see, there you my go. prediction for winner and the one I want to win. Oh, wonderful. Super Mario uh, Wonder. Okay, that's great. And that only leaves one as one category. It does. And it is the coveted gaudy. Gaudy. Growing up gaudy, baby. Oh, gaudy. It's John Travolta handing out the award in a wig. Are you an Arturo fan or a... John. Uh, a, yeah, John Gotti. I'm fan. a John Gotti okay, fan. Okay. You know, he did so much good for the uh, the neighborhood. Did you ever get, hear that clip of that guy? I don't know. It shows up in my circle all the time of like, uh, or like whatever echo chamber I've created on the internet. <laughs> uh, is is uh, John Gotti got, uh, I think, convicted. Uh -huh. And it's a guy in the, the guy, there's a guy on the street that's being interviewed. They're like, what do you think about the John Gotti thing? He goes, what do you do? He did nothing wrong. He's good for the good for the neighborhood. Oh, whatever. And he's like in a Celtic shirt or something. <laughs> he's like, oh, wait, I didn't do anything. And he goes, what about the murders? He goes, what murders? <laughs> and the what murders always makes me laugh. What murders? <laughs> what murders? Oh, I man. mean, he was never convicted of murder. No, it was probably like tax evasion or something. I think like it was that. tax evasion yeah. or some RICO charge or something like yeah, that. Uh, uh, game of the year, the Gaudi Award, recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. And this just reminded me, uh, game direction. The deserving winner of that award is Cocoon, and it wasn't nominated. That, like, in my mind, there is no, there is no way that game shouldn't win. Mm -hmm. The the Every time you start a puzzle in that game, you're like, there's no way I'm smart enough to figure this out. But yeah. the game always knows exactly what you're capable of and never makes you feel like you're this guy's a big dummy. Maybe we should dumb it down for him. Yeah, maybe uh, we don't give him this puzzle yet. <laughs> Let's send what it back murders? to the What murders? <laughs> uh, uh, game of the year. Yes. Another notable omission to this one, I think, is Cocoon. I've already said that before. Mm -hmm. But we have the nominations. They are Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Wonder, and Tears of the Kingdom. Um, Andrew? What are you thinking? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I have this game winning some awards pretty early on, or when we were started talking about this, because I thought this would be coming back around for them for game of the year, and that's why I think you start handing out some of the bridesmaids' gifts somewhere else. Sure. And this is game of the year is going to be Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, I think it it summarizes where we are in video games. It's a big game that gives you lots of decision, but it was also delivered really well, and people really enjoyed the experience of doing it while pushing video games in a really interesting way. Yep. I think it kind of checks a lot of boxes for people, and so that's why I think it'll be, you know, if it's a, if it's 
it's fan vote and, you know, people choosing it, I think that's where it's going to land. Yeah, I, I think there's also uh, uh, this element of of people wanting like such a traditional like tabletop inspired game winning mm. game of the year because it is like hand in hand with our understanding of video games is like Dungeons and Dragons and and uh, and the tabletop elements and RPGs. And I can see that. I just think we've gotten too far away from March ish. Was it March that Tears of the Kingdom came yeah. out? Tears of the Kingdom is my prediction for game of the year. Whoa. And I, it's, it's, isn't it, huh? isn't it, cr- huh? <laughs> huh? Uh, uh, oh my God. <laughs> um, isn't it crazy uh-huh. that we are now saying that that's like a dark horse pick. Remember when this game came out, we were like, this is the most unbelievable thing we've ever seen. Yeah. Good luck to every other game coming out this year. We're like, call it off. Yeah. We know who's winning game of the start year. Start transcribe. Just start etching it into the stone yes. right now. Yeah. And I think our memories are too short. I think we forget the scope of the game. Uh, I, I think we forget how uh, uh, mind boggling it was that they did what they did with the game. We talk about play testing a narrative like we did in Baldur's Gate, but like, yeah, tears of the kingdom. The the factoring in phasing through uh, caves and and the tears tears of the kingdom. I think I think we've just forgotten like what this game did when it came out, and I think it's incredible that a game as monumental as Tears of the Kingdom was is kind of being forgotten. Only six months later, seven months later, something like that. This is award cycles in general, though. Like a a movie comes out too early and they're like, ah, it's never going to win an Oscar. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's it's just it's the same way where you do forget how you felt. 100%. And and you're right. Tears of the Kingdom wins. I who could complain about that? Yeah, no one can. It's it's, it's almost like it would win and people would be like, oh, yeah, that came out this year. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try that again because I'm going to. Oh, yeah, it's really good. Exactly. Now, here's one question I have for you before we kind of close off uh, this conversation. Um. Resident Evil 4. Okay, yeah, go. I loved it. It it, it was one of my favorite gaming experiences of the year. But it was Game of the Year, right? Nominee? No. Yeah. Because it's a remake. I I just... It's not to take anything away from the game, because I think there's probably an argument you can make that a remake can potentially be considered for Game of the Year. But... But (laughs) I would... Like, unless it... Resident Evil 2, when that game came out, mm-hmm. and it changed the entire perspective of the game and really made it a brand new game, um, uh, that I can understand. Resident Evil 4 is 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 pretty much the same game yeah. with a new engine. Uh, it feels relatively similar, and it's just it's 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 a, a fantastic game. I'm happy it's getting some recognition, action adventure maybe, mm-hmm. but yeah, game of the year feels like take that away and put something that deserves it, something that's a bit more unique, like Cocoon in there. Yeah, I th- or a lot of people are going to say Final Fantasy 16. Sure, some people are probably going to say Starfield, um, um, Madden, 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 <laughs> definitely. Yeah, 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 but yeah, a weird, kind of an interesting one. I just wanted to get your take on on remakes and game of the year. That was the one where it stood out. I was like, oh, really? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was making. I, I knew it was going to happen. Legend of the Kingdom kind of thing. Legend uh, of the Kingdom. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh. um, yeah, that was the wonder. I, I, you're rem- I just, I don't understand the thinking behind that. You're remaking a game, and they made it better. Sure, you know, great, but like, what did they really do? I, yeah. I just, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't really it's a great that. experience. I want them to keep doing it, but for Game of the Year is a little. You got to do something really special. Yeah. Uh, let's do a uh, a little recap. Uh, most anticipated, we skipped past. Uh, best <laughs> adaptation, we both went with The Last of Us. Best RPG, we both went with uh, 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 Baldur's Gate Three. Mm-hmm. Uh, action adventure, I went with Alan Wake Two. You went with Tears of the Kingdom. Weird that we flipped a little bit on that. Eh? Yes, uh, action, I know. I went for High Fire Rush. You went for Remnant Two. Indie, we both went for Cocoon. Ongoing, you went Cyberpunk. I yep. went Fortnite. Narrative, mm-hmm. uh, you went Alan Wake 2. I went Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, and Game Direction, I went Wonder. You went Tears of the Kingdom. Game of the Year, you went Baldur's Gate. Yep. I went Tears of the Kingdom. That's fun. We flipped on a lot a of these. A lot of them. So yeah. it's going to be great when we both go over 16. There was another one that just like <laughs> exactly. yeah, wins. Starfield is just the write-in on every ballot. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. oh, all okay. right, yeah. Far Cry 6? I thought that came out three years ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's going to be really exciting. we got a couple weeks, so yeah. let us know. What are, what are what are the ones you're strongest about? What do you think about the nominees in general? Our video games. What do you on? fucking think? What do you think? Use your brain. Think for yourself. What murders? What murders? <laughs> See? It gets in your head. What murders? <laughs> it's like it's the stupidest question you could possibly yeah. ask. Oh, but until then, we love every single one of you, and we can't wait to talk to you soon. My name is Andrew Bascom, and with me, as always, is nominated. Bad boy of podcasting.
Oh, Mikey Aaronworth? No, no, you say Mr. Bebop himself. Oh, Mr. Bebop himself. Mikey Aaronworth. <laughs> One change and I just <laughs> fall apart. My name is Adrian Bascom. This is the Retrograde Podcast. Game over. What murders? Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. I think I said my name twice. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs>